Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review. Two EPs, in fact. Double EP review. Things that happen at day and things that happen at night from Milo. Milo is a Wisconsin rapper, and his debut album slash mixtape, I Wish My Brother Rob Was Here, was not just the best Del the Funky Homo Sapien reference of 2011, but also an extremely creative and fun, as well as personal hip-hop album from an MC who painted his nerdy lifestyle as not just a joke or some kind of character. Milo might have spent a good chunk of last year playing Diablo 3, but that does not mean he doesn't have worthwhile thoughts, feelings, and it doesn't mean that he lacks self-awareness. Kind of sidestepping that overly goofy, like Big Bang Theory-esque nerdy character, Milo revealed that instead he is just this guy whose mind kind of runs a mile a minute. All over this LP, Milo's kind of flawed character makes him incredibly, incredibly relatable, even to people who aren't necessarily experiencing the same things that he is. He himself has said in lines that he is not the greatest at structuring a song and that maybe he's not the most able rapper out there. Plus, once you get into his influence, like Bus Driver and, and Open Mike Eagle, it's clear that he takes things away from them stylistically. Still, despite all this, Milo comes off particularly peculiar. <laughs> Shortly after the release of, of his debut project, Milo came out with Milo Takes Bats, which was kind of a concept EP where he was rapping over a bunch of beats produced by Bats. And it was okay, you know, to me it felt like kind of a goofier and, and less potent version of what I had already heard on his debut tape, with a few sort of personal updates thrown in there. And now this latest group of tracks comes through with this double EP, this day and night EP, which the only major sort of difference between them aside from the title is that one EP was produced by one person and the other by another. Day being handled by Riley Lake and Night, analog tape dispenser. And I was kind of expecting this, but I was sad to find that I didn't really see an eerily complex set of connections from one EP to another or anything like that. Overall, they just kind of feel like two sides of the same coin because Conceptually and lyrically, instrumentally and emotionally, these EPs have quite a bit in common. For one, the production on this thing is way, way, way more melodic, detailed and atmospheric, especially atmospheric on the second of these two EPs. These atmospheric, spacious instrumentals just bring the emotive quality of Milo's music to a new level, especially on a track like Almond Milk Paradise, which is the last track on the first EP. Safari Al is on the hook, singing nicely. The instrumental is blissful. It's heavenly. It's got a really upbeat, smile-inducing mood to it, but then the second half is so dark and strange and murky, which is a huge juxtaposition from the pristine pianos that were on the first half of this song. Plus Milo's rapping on this second half comes off a little more urgent and the emotion of this side of the track changes too to kind of being a little self-defeating where he's saying if I had written the greatest rap song I wouldn't let you hear it. To kind of continue on the production the very cool chorus vocals on the opening track to the first EP here Sweet Chin Music which has a lot of wrestling pro wrestling references in the lyrics the chorus vocals awesome just so pretty. I like the reverb soak percussion on the track Cut My Hair, and there are more airy tones on the song Folk Metaphysics with some weeping guitar kind of mixed into the synthesizers. As the song progresses, I love that tweet tweet sound that kind of pops in the beat. And surprisingly, Milo actually reappropriates the lyrics and melody from the Wallflowers 
song, One Headlight, the chorus specifically, and his singing is, is noticeably improved. I'm not saying he has a huge range, but he's sort of making sure he kind of stays within what he has. And the song Legends of the Hidden Temple, which comes in right after that, the strings on that track are beautiful. I mean, it's such an elegant song. The acoustic guitar in there too, just this mix of instrumentation and the chords that are being played, it's really sorrowful. Now as far as the second EP here from Lazy Coon to Gus Haynes and just onward, everything is just some of the best production I've heard in this more atmospheric hip-hop production style that has been kind of coming up ever since guys like ASAP Rocky and Little B popularized it. The vast reverb on the first track and the soul sample on the second track here, there's just a lot of sheen on these instrumentals. I mean, Milo fan or not, he has definitely, definitely stepped his instrumental picking game up, as well as his recording game, because I mean, the vocals sound way better too. So I mean, the beats on these EPs are really good, but I enjoyed this project lyrically too. Milo is still kind of the same dude he was on his past releases. He is a highly referential dude. He is a guy that constantly gets caught up in his own personal musings, as well as his hunt for objective truths and the indie rap culture he currently thrives in, whether he's having bus driver on for a verse, or rapping about debating philosophy with Open Mic Eagle, or talking about in a song whether or not he should be making more Kitty Pride references, wishing that he could sing raspy like Gonja Sufi, or seeing in this abstract visual concoction Danny Brown's tongue by itself floating in space. On the track Folk Metaphysics, Milo is spitting kind of like this personal to-do list for his life, or kind of like a series of New Year's resolutions where he's saying, I'm going to eat more Fig Newtons, I'm going to sign women's rights petitions, I'm going to be better than my father. I feel like on this track, Milo sets all these goals out for himself, and he's kind of in a way determined to make it all happen, but he's facing all these difficulties and shortcomings and past failures and failures that he is sure to make in the future. However, he doesn't really keep that from making him feel any less determined, I guess. It all, to me, kind of feels like that Baz Luhrmann track, you know, the Wear Sunscreen track. I mean, maybe not quite so much on the level that I'm giving you advice, but it's just, <laughs> in a way, kind of weirdly moving and... And Milo's lyrics and, and his inflection when he's rapping on the track Legends of the Hidden Temple, that combined with the instrumental on that song, I just feel like I'm listening to some kind of just personal, emotional tragedy unfold before my very ears. I mean, I think the only major flaw with a lot of these songs are, for sure, the hooks, which, again, on another song here, Milo kind of says, I wish I was better at songwriting. And there are some hooks here, most notably on songs like where he's saying, I need to make more Kitty Pride references. Not that that's a, a bad lyric or anything, but there are hooks like that one that feel a little too long and jumbled to really kind of have a, a hookiness to them or anything. Whether it be a silly love tune like that folk metaphysics track, edition two, or something funnier, a little more racially charged and clever, like the Gus Haynes Cribbage League track. It's pretty much the same Milo, but he has gained some experience points, he's leveled up, he's evolved into the next form, however you want to say it. What really matters is that Milo has pulled together a series of tracks here that have fun, creative, sometimes interesting, thought-provoking and moving lyrics, and great instrumentals. I enjoyed the first one a lot more than the second, but putting them to sort of as one project, I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this EP set. If you've given them a listen, what did you think of them? Love them, hate them, why? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano, Milo, Hairdryer, Forever.